This is Jerry Glanville, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, brother. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening. Crame dog. <laughs> Hear that all aboard the USFL express, Sean rocking this fire. It may look orange to you on your screen, but it is red New Kramer's- Jersey general shirt. Hold that thought Sean, sure. because I was walking in the studio, the offices here in beautiful Eagle Rock, California, and I saw a gentleman wearing a military outfit. He saluted me wearing this general <laughs> shirt. It could not have been a coincidence. It has to be a sign. Bring this man to my right on the program. Joining us as always to talk USFL football, a, a longtime advocate for the USFL, <laughs> a man who claims to remember watching USFL <laughs> games at the age of three, Colby Dan, aka the Dan to base. It's a fact. I can I can pick the spot, the place, the location, and the teams. Uh, look, but this a- apologies. Is, this I didn't is, have Colby at USFL <laughs> levels. He was way hot there. This Peaking. is this is uh, George Patton here. We're calling him that. Uh, he's a general fan. We're gonna we're gonna see how his picks do. I don't know if you guys Wait. have seen this. General Ryan, real money Kramer sounds just fine to me. Thank you. Wait, you don't like General Patton? No. You you sandbagging son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway. uh, he wouldn't approve of your soy diet anyway. But ninety oh, percent chance of rain Saturday. <laughs> so they're gonna football cancel football weather, baby. <laughs> and Sunday triple header, sixty percent chance of rain. Let's go. All right, so we have an awesome show. We're going to pick every game uh, against the spread. We're also going to be giving out a DFS lineup for the USFL. Also, if you're looking to play season long fantasy USFL, make sure you check out the USFL gambling podcast as well as the uh, fantasy football podcast. I know the guys hit on some of the did a live draft there the other night. And if you go to altfantasysports.com, where altfantasysports.com. Now we are awarding a thousand dollars to the league that scores the most total points. You have to make sure you uh, select the D gen settings, uh, alt fantasy sports.com. So collectively (laughs) get your whole team together. Get you guys playing every week and a league who has the most wins a thousand dollars. Wow. What's the buy-in for that? Completely free. Holy shit. Obviously what? the, uh, Wait, so fans. you're playing anyway. <laughs> yes, exactly. Is the bar lo- like, do you just, how, how do you end? Do you just check a box? Very, you very don't have to simple. send us a check at all. No, oh no check God. required the and ma- th- infinite overlay alert and a more overlay. Ryan, our NBA playoffs bracket challenge, $500 uh, free entry in the bracket challenge. Winner take all for five hundred bucks. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash NBA playoffs to grab how, that. How dare you try to jam that NBA shit when we're here talking about United States football? The United States football, so American, almost as American as betting over at Win Bet. That's right, bet big, win bigger. Fire up that parlay wheel. Favorite part of uh, the Win Betting app is that sweet, sweet parlay wheel. Be doing some comedy shows in Colorado this week, and of course, I'll be firing up my Win Bet app. It is live in so many states. Will I be checking out the Win Bet Casino so I can get a hundred percent deposit bonus up to one thousand dollars? You're damn right, I am. Mm. Oh man, it is going to be awesome. And of course, bet ten dollars, get two hundred dollars in free bets. And the same game parlay wins uh, own build your own bet feature. So much to choose from, so much action. Download the Win Bet app now or visit wynnbet.com to get started today. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through is available. If you or somebody you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. Let it go. Let it rip. And adding to our USFL coverage, the inaugural episode, uh, managing editor over at sportsgamblingpodcast.com. You know him as the Don of Bills Mafia, Adam Pelletier. Adam, uh, how fired up are you? 
I couldn't be more excited. Now the you- USFL <laughs> is here. I feel like we're going to have a sword fight. Uh, if you know what I mean between Adam and uh, Colby right now, we are oh, entering not a, even a question. <laughs> we, a question. I think we should propose a squid games type uh, scenario <laughs> between Adam Colby, throw XFL Jim in there uh, to decide who really loves spring football the most. That would be, that would be must see television. <laughs> Because I know you guys both love it. Uh, SGPN's first reality TV show, <laughs> yes. contestant I, show. I like this idea, guys. So I you're like each courting it. USFL. She's the Bachelorette. Sean has a lot of experience watching the Bachelorette, yeah. so we can exactly. figure that out. <laughs> this feels like the natural follow to our dabbling in the game show industry for a hot minute there. And that we should bring that back. The Let It Ride game show was fun. It was just a, a lot of pain in the ass. Um, all right. USFL football. We've gotten better since then. Though, no, we have, we have uh, USFL <laughs> football is back. Yes. All right. Eight teams, uh, one location, Adam, any idea why they've assigned uh, city names to these teams when they're all going to be <laughs> playing in Birmingham? Is it just to get a fan base or eventually is the plan to have them move back to their cities? My understanding is the plan is to have them move to their cities next year or play okay. in a more regionalized. You, you got to um, understand, they're starting a league, and COVID oh, was still go. going right. on when they were investing into this thing. And, so and that move. is the other thing. And uh, as they've said, this is an entirely new entity. Well, the new USFL claims it's an entirely new entity. The old USFL claims this is an attempt to cash in on the goodwill and names built by the old league. Uh, so we have yet to see that Ooh, battle like resolved. This. The USFL <laughs> just battles between fans, battle between an analyst, and battle between leagues in the courtroom. All you right. know, it's Sean, not I, spring football if there's not lawsuits. Apparently, I have a question for you, Sean. <laughs> what lasts longer, the USFL as a league or the lawsuit? Oh, okay, good question. I thought you were going to uh, talk about Coach K's retirement. <laughs> Throw that in there. Oh, Coach K's retirement's not lasting yeah, as long. USFL as is they definitely going to outlive <laughs> Coach K's retirement. Uh, yeah. All right. So eight teams. They're all playing in uh, two locations in Birmingham, Alabama. Yep. In the North Division, you have the Michigan Panthers, Boo. New Jersey, <laughs> New Jersey Generals, <laughs> Philadelphia Stars, Boo. Pittsburgh Maulers. In the South Division, you have the Birmingham Stallions, Houston Gamblers, New Orleans Breakers, and the Tampa Bay Bandits. Colby, I know you're a USFL expert. What, um, assuming they're playing NFL style football, what are some key differences in this uh, incarnation of the USFL? Well, they have the uh, the XFL uh, uh, conversions. You can get a three point conversion. Yeah. Now we didn't see it. At, I mean, I guess we didn't see a ton of the XFL because of COVID nineteen, but uh, uh, we didn't see many teams run it. I think the Houston Roughnecks did it. You can go for one, um, two, or three points. Uh, yeah. One yard line, a two yard line. No, or no, ten, no, no, no. Ten yard. One is line, a right? kick. Oh, I'm one sorry. Is yeah. Kick. Yeah. Kick. One is two a kick. One is a kick. Yeah. And two, two yard line and, two. and ten yard yep. line for the three. Which I'm glad. I'm glad they did that. The, they also have. They don't have the XFL kickoff, as you know. I've been pretty outspoken. I, I thought the <laughs> XFL kickoff was terrible. <laughs> An outspoken um, advocate of spring league kickoff rules. Yes, they are offering they're kicking off from the 25 yard line. Yeah, and they're offering yeah. the uh, the fourth and 12 deal for the onside kick from the uh, 33. I'm, I'm a big fan of that, and Colby's going to be over there and talk about leather helmets, the triple op, triple option, and <laughs> dome football. Yes. Uh, so I'm just going to get Colby's talking points out of the way there. <laughs> but the fourth and 12 is going to be yeah, I like it. really nice and a lot of fun. I remember watching it in the AAF. It was, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot what? better and what? just enjoyable to watch. Plus, you know, makes the sweat that much better. So, More so fantasy points to be instead scored. of kicking off, you can choose to take instead of kicking off from whatever the 25, I guess, you can take a fourth and 12 from the 35, 33 yard line. And if they stop you, they get the ball where they stop you. If you get the first down, it's like a converted onside kick. I'm on the other side of this. I, I don't like that, but but uh, you know, I feel like it's a healthy compromise between the idea of keeping special teams around and turning the like way to keep the ball to make it take it is more of an offensive play than a random bounce of a football. 
That, nah. That's my take on it. I don't like it. I think, I mean, you I think like, it's caters so, too much to the Some offense. of us like yeah. coin flips and some of us yeah. like watching football. <laughs> I like watching football. So yeah. D- now, Adam, we didn't see many three point plays in the, <laughs> you enraged was, Colby was already. Per- I, I was pretty perfect. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to do. I'm just going to try to vote <laughs> Colby as much as possible. Let me, let me do my this. Colby right now. I'm yeah. getting excited over here. <laughs> yes. And look, if you're going to play, if, off if the, you're gonna, the whole playoffs, by the way, being played in Canton, Ohio, paying oh, homage beautiful. to the Canton Bulldogs and the, you know, one of the meccas of football. All right, here's what we're going to do. The mecca of football. I said that one of stadium, the meccas. That stadium is a hole. <laughs> that stadium that's all is you a need. Hole. That's all. Oh, all that's you need is a field. Beautiful, stadium. beautiful Canton, Ohio. It that, sounds that like that field is trash. They we, couldn't even <laughs> paint it right that one year. Sounds like we. Oh, that's, that's part true. of the fun. That's. <laughs> They did. They you did don't re- need a bunch of money. You All don't right. need millions of dollars into playing a game of football. In flash. Uh, Colby right. and Adam need to do a weekly episode for the USFL show, please. Yes. All right. Old uh, man uh, versus young, younger man. Other changes. The 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 weird clock stoppages. <laughs> yes. Um. I I think the consensus is that also didn't really impact shit, but the uh, clock will stop after each play under two minutes. No, 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 no. After first downs was my understanding. Oh, it's college. Yeah, you're right. Adam's right. Yeah. Okay. So just college rules. Good, I don't think good it rule will change. Great rule. I like, I'm okay with that one. Yeah. Well, really? This is, you complained about it two weeks ago on your rule. <laughs> well, there, I mean, if, I, if it was I'm going to bring the tape Dan. <laughs> if it was me, I wouldn't have done it, but I'm okay. Well, like let, let that one go. It's you know not why a big I like deal. it? You gotta, I, you gotta know when to hold them. No one to fold them. You know why I like it? Because these are college games. We're about to be watching. Well, we can we can hope that it 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 hits uh, D one college play. I think that would be a nice bar for uh, the USFL to hit. It'll now, be there. Now we we didn't see many teams go for three point plays. I don't imagine a lot of three point plays. It seems like coaches have trouble wrapping their head around a three point play. <laughs> so I think the coaches that the USFL has are actually more likely to do it. You've got some guys like Larry Fedora, Todd Haley, some guys who are a little yeah, bit yeah Haley. I can see it some guys who are more embracing of the analytics. And I also think that um, with defensive scores, it's more likely to happen because if you get pick six, a scoop six, and then you go for three, all of a sudden you just turn this into a two score game and you've really put the pressure and got a momentum swing. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a few more coaches going for it with that three point play in mind, especially since it's a 38 man active roster. Players are going to be gassed, which is going to favor the offense. Yeah, that's it. I, I mean, I would definitely go for a bunch of three point plays. What about the going for it on fourth and 12 in as the onside kick? If you had to make a guess, Adam, how many there's four games this weekend, four games every weekend. How many uh, fourth and 12 onside kicks do you imagine we see this weekend? I would put the over under at about two and a half. Two and a half. All right. Yeah, that sounds about right. And that, I mean, it, it will add some level of excitement. I do miss the old style onside kick, the scrum aspect of it. But I, you're a new league. You know, you got to experiment. You got to dabble. All right. A so bit. I was just doing some math in my head. Uh, that's why I looked checked out for a second. There's no way you should ever go for three. Why? The, the probability of you converting a fourth and goal from the two. <laughs> you might as well go for fourth and twelve. You're saying. Is not like it's it's a fifty percent increase, two to three points, right? Mm -hmm. You're getting one hundred fifty percent of your points. It's it's the the chance of you converting a fourth and ten from the the or a fourth and goal from the ten yard line. But you know, it opens up the receivers. You got more options, and then no, I would argue. I would argue we're going to see some people cite the data of what it is to convert a fourth and ten in general. And not with the fact that the goal line only gives you ten extra yards. It's much harder to convert fourth and goal from the ten than it is fourth and ten from anywhere else on the field because you have more yardage that the defense in mm. theory has to cover. Mm. And so I think there, I, I think you would be foolish to go for three. I think maybe the coaches were smart. Well, in it sounds not, like Ryan's team not, soft. Not, not My a, team. Not, I mean, not we're going the, for three every time. No, that would happen though. Some cases where the numbers would fit. The reason they started shooting more threes in the NBA is because they realized if you could shoot forty percent. From three, it was the same as shooting sixty percent from two, which is really efficient. I think in this case, the efficiency isn't there, and I think if anything, you should go for two every time. Uh, potentially, uh, dude. So, but, anyway, but what about the ball? Be, that might be part of the 
part of the thinking is if we give a three point option, more people are going to go for two yeah. with the threat of someone going for three and three also, you know, we're here to talk about gambling on this. There's going to be some more fun backdoor oh. covers now. Are there going such for three? Yeah. Is there such thing as a key number when you got a yeah, uh, key numbers point play? might be de- I think the key is you just NFL kickers struggling with the extra point. This uh, to me, this is a, I'm going for two every time. If I'm a coach, yeah, oh, I've yeah. solved it. I've solved it. How about we talk about the, I thought the, the, the thing we've been asking for, I feel like for decades is a, a ball that, so they don't have a chain for a first mm. down. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is awesome. They actually just put a chip in the ball and it will, you the computers measure it. It's insane that the NFL Sean, how is still doing this. And when this. you score, it lights up. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, didn't, didn't, really, know I didn't know the lights up thing. Look, that's that's news to me. We, but the University fun. of either Pittsburgh or Pennsylvania developed this technology like a decade ago. You figured out it a lot. And time the NFL ago. was like, oh, you know, you gotta <laughs> fucking have these volunteers. You gotta chain have the guy, these old guys carrying chains around and and putting <laughs> out an index. They're not card. even so, paid positions. <laughs> actually. Uh, the XFL guy, Sam Schwartzstein, uh, who is their main rules guy, did talked about this. Why can't you just put a chip in the ball? And he explained some of the logistical challenges that actually happen, where it's, are you doing a VAR thing where both teams are on one side? Are you Do you have guys running up and down the field trying to set a laser across? And there are some logistical challenges. So I don't know how the USFL exactly went about solving that. And basically what he arrived at was, we could do it, but the chains are actually in the grand scheme of things, pretty efficient mm. when yeah. you think about it. See, if I was the USFL, I would just say we're doing the lasers and then, <laughs> and then just fucking a guy a run button. some graphic and who's going to argue. No, one's going to know. <laughs> no, there won't you know, there's going to be like 12, 15 I mean, people at the stadium. They'll be like, yeah, that looks like a first down. Well, I mean, I've seen it where the chains broke before. Oh yeah, you know where you're trying to measure for the first down and the what? chains broke. You're like, what? That the one f- time what it snowed in back, Puerto Rico. What backwater <laughs> football game were you watching? I have watched yeah, some standard depth, high school Adam, games, standard, standard and depth. I've never seen the chains break. I've also seen it where the chain actually gets like it looked like a C because of a, a football player <laughs> fucking ran into it. Yeah. When we have a, a fighting league, I can't wait to watch the fight. Uh, wh- how do we want to start? Shall All we? right. Well, uh, before we get to it, I mm. Colby's a little hot and bothered. Seems like he needs a moment to chill. So much stress right now. He's got his college football previews coming out. He's got the USFL. He's got to get angry about onside kicks. Colby, I think you've earned it. I think you've earned a mountain cold refreshment, AKA a nice ice cold Coors Light. I'm looking at Colby's mountains right now. They're blue. Don't worry. Means he's enjoying a nice, crisp, cold Coors Light. Cold lager, cold filtered, and cold package. Literally made to chill. Colby, I know you love some Coors Light, and you can you can get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Drizzly or Instacart. All you gotta do is go to CoorsLight.com slash SGP. That's CoorsLight.com slash SGP. And remember, as always, celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Kramer, let's start talking uh, picks here. Totals. I have a, a bunch of strong thoughts on the totals. First off, the <laughs> whatever book that opened these spreads. Box bet. Is a is a maniac. They they Losers. had like 56, 57 point totals. They immediately Listen, got bet down. Fox betting czar, whatever you want to call him, Ed Hartman is playing chess and we're all out here playing <laughs> checkers. He's like, Yeah, we're gonna set these super high, suck them all in week one, and then we're just gonna hammer them the remaining. <laughs> 12 or 11 weeks of the season. Well, now, now the totals have, have since stabilized a little bit, but I'm still on auto unders. We were all on the auto unders for the AAF uh, XFL. I mean, hall of fame game. Usually the totals at like 34 points. We got 42 and a half, 43 and a half, 44 and a half, 41 and a half. Is, uh, to me, it's just me, auto hall, under yeah, all. Hall of Fame game's a good example. You, the, like you have to apply the principle of I'm going to take the dog, and I'm going to take the under unless I have a really compelling case. And and did I, I bring up the fact that it's going to rain all day? It, you were Saturday <laughs> and Sunday and so, oh, Yeah, that's Colby, what, you didn't that's know they fun. moved the games to New Orleans to play in yeah. the dome. <laughs> got, oh come on, <laughs> Adam! We only have so many moments to chill for Colby. <laughs> <laughs> He is a breakers fan. I am a breakers fan until next year. If we, uh, they're going to be at Tulane stadium. 
I'm okay. If they're at that <laughs> stupid, filthy roller rink, I am not okay. All right, Kramer, let's let's uh, read off the lines. Also, for, talk futures as yeah. well. For the record, Colby is a fan of all eight teams. Yeah, but we'll get through that uh, later. Benedict Dant. There's, in, there's uh, one team that that kind fu- of bothers fully me. aroused. All right, for uh, we got one game on Saturday. Uh, for your viewing pleasure, it can be seen on Fox or NBC. Look at that, a little mega cast. Four thirty on the West Coast. 7:30 local time in Birmingham. The host, the Birmingham Birmingham Stallions, nine to one to win the championship. They're the longest shot, minus three, minus one sixty five on the money line. The New Jersey Generals, the second longest shot, plus seven fifty to win the championship. They're plus one forty five on the money line. Forty two and a half is the total. I think particularly in this game, based on my uh, my heavy hitting research into the league, these might be the two worst quarterback rooms, mm. uh, two of the worst. I- anything, however you want to slice it, this is a and under, yeah. and b I'm taking a dog, and and the way I'm handicapping a lot of this shit, I'm looking right at the coach. What do I have? And I, I know Colby's going to come with some ECU bullshit right now. Oh, well, there's a reason Virginia Tech stopped scheduling us, Sean. Oh, here <laughs> we All go. right. Uh, so and I'm taking is, the dog and I'm taking the under. I'm I'm against you, Ryan. I'm all over the Birmingham Why? Stallions. One home field advantage. No, oh, really, to me, stop. it's about fading bad quarterback play. And the general starting quarterback, uh, Ben Holmes, 23 and two at Tarleton State. He's out with a broken foot. So now, friend of the program. Yes. Uh, so now you're bringing in Luis Perez, who is mm-hmm. not going to have enough time to prepare. And Alex Luis Mag- Perez isn't starting this game. Yes. Guys. Yes. This, this yes. is not. This is not going to be Luis Perez. This Who's is going to be DeAndre then? Johnson. Yeah. Okay. My Former five evidence, star. My evidence. <laughs> the he, USFL dropped a hype video yesterday just titling it QBs and showed all the guys who we assume are going to be starters. And at the end of it, when they get to the New Jersey generals, who do they show? But number one, DeAndre Johnson, Mm. that being said, either way it's so the third string quarterback for the generals, regardless, I'm DeAndre Johnson was directly picked by the generals in the initial draft. Luis Perez was brought in after the fact to back up Ben Holmes. DeAndre Johnson played in the spring league last year. So Mike Riley's going to have some familiarity with him as well. And Mike Riley can steer into the fact mm-hmm. that he trusts. He has a running back that he trusts. Yes. And he has a receiver that he trusts who have played in his system. Um, I, I like Alex Magoo, the uh, stallions quarterback mm. played at FIU uh, 9,091 <laughs> yards, 65 Ooh. touchdowns, 37 interceptions. And he was the first overall pick in the draft. This guy, he's much better than whatever uh, Birmingham, you know, whatever the generals are going to be trotting out. I am not, I'm not a fan of the uh, the generals, and it's going to be wet. Stallions I- defense. We we're expecting defense to carry these games. Uh, Scooby Wright, All American at Arizona, one of the linebackers for the Stallions. All over the Stallions, their defense. I think. I I'm, I'm going to be playing, uh, you know, breaking news. I'm going to be playing Birmingham in uh, DFS as well. Cause I think wow. there's some turnover opportunities wow. against the generals. Wow. Look, I'll be where you at. Uh, I'm on the generals here. Mike yeah, Riley. Let's go. Give me one of these. Uh, yeah. Colby. Let's Boom, there we go. It. Let's go. Uh, I, I think I'm wondering. You said you like Magoo. You got to remember Jamar Smith uh, played quarterback for mm-hmm. Skip Holtz at Louisiana Tech. So I wonder if it, you know rainy game. Maybe a turnover or two, put the better athlete out there on the field. That is Smith. I, I just think though, Mike Riley's a, a proven winner on many whether it's the CFL, whether it's He's the, the best uh, coach yeah, in here, yeah. right? Is, I mean, it, is that a hot take to say he's I the best Chan coach in the league? Uh Todd Haley. Oh Todd, Todd Haley. Haley. Why, why am I confusing <laughs> these two guys? Yeah, he's Sean Chan Sean. Haley's the super old guy. Sean shook from the YouTube <laughs> comment during the NBA show. <laughs> Uh, no, I would probably say I think I would go Mike Riley as, as I probably mean, the best coach here. Or, or, or I mean, I, I would argue it. I, I think if, if nothing else, it, I, Todd I Haley know. ran an NFL offense at a pretty high level. But I almost Todd Haley, Todd Haley, Todd Haley ran coach, an though. NFL offense at a high level and is never coached down at a lower spring level. Mm. Todd Haley doesn't know what this takes. Mike Riley, yeah. this man bleeds football. He might be the only bigger football junkie. Then Colby Dant. Oh, look at that. He's that, that, was, spring league. that was very He's nice. He's coached uh, in the uh, XFL. He's coached in the AAF. He yeah. coached at Oregon State. 
where has any coach? And what what I would you say is I, I like the idea of a guy who a has that experience, but like I would almost favor a college coach versus an NFL coach in this kind of situation. Dude, he's coached in the AAF. He was the San Antonio yeah. Commanders coach. He was um, a proper Commanders yeah. coach, not yes. like this filthy Ron Rivera. <laughs> From a commander to a general. Oh, I love uh, a general. You know, sir. Please, uh, I'm, me. I am, and I get points. Ride that, ride that yeah. money line, ride that money line oh, with the yeah. generals. Yeah. I mean, honestly, the way this works is no one has any fucking clue. So uh, absolutely, if you like the underdog, you take the money line. Adam, uh, it sounds like you're all in on the uh, generals here. Yeah. yeah, I'm in on the generals uh, plus three. I'd get on the money line as well. Yes. Um, Boom. If I was going to take an Ooh. over, this is the one that I'm taking because this is the most evenly matched game based on the projections we did earlier this year mm. on a points per game basis. Everything else is a massive mismatch. Okay. On an, Interesting. From an offensive so perspective. It sounds like we have a, a USFL model, which uh, I'm going to need access to immediately. Sunday, 9 a.m. here on the West Coast. You can watch this one on NBC and BC. Houston, the Gamblers. Kevin Sumlin's back, guys. We get to fade him again. Plus 750 to win the championship. Plus three in this spot. Plus 145 on the money line. Taking on Jeff Fisher and the Michigan Panthers as a favorite, minus 165 on the money line, plus 450 to win it all. They're the second favorites. 43 and a half is the total. Absolutely love the idea of getting to fade Kevin Sumlin. And as we can see, Sean's team, the Houston Gamblers over here. I'm wearing the Gamblers shirt. I'm not a Gamblers. Love the idea (laughs) of if if I'm betting on a single unit to be prepared and ready to go from day one, it's Jeff Fisher's defense. This has nothing to do with him finishing seven and nine. This has nothing to do with him being a horrible head coach and gambling on Sam Bradford. And this has everything to do with which he does kind of have the league Sam Bradford, in my opinion, first overall pick kind of a lawn chair as Colby will tell you. Shea Patterson. Yeah. I, I, I go Michigan. I think this is a defensive game. Uh, I know I said take the dogs and the unders unless you have a valid case for it. I think Jeff Fisher's defense uh, is the most prepared unit we see all weekend. I'm At- I, I'm fading you. No, oh, I'm fa- I'm fading Jeff Fisher. I love fading Jeff Fisher. This is really a Sumlin. Sophie a Sophie's choice no. between Sumlin and Fisher. And you want to talk about a guy who, I mean, was was Jeff Fisher die? Is he a football junkie? He, to me, it just seems like a guy. Laying around his couch, the phone <laughs> rang. He's like, "Ah, yeah, I guess." I'll, what is this USFL? All right, I'm I'm bored. I'm not doing much. I I don't think he has the same passion. And, and Shea Patterson, I think there's a lot of questions. There's a reason they brought in Shea Patterson. I think it's maybe to inspire the Michigan fans. Like, hey, Panthers fans, or if there are Michigan Panthers fans, oh, there are. Uh, they won. They won the the USFL before with Bobby Abear. Okay, <laughs> okay so yeah. they're gonna bring. And, and not only that, but they have some of the largest social media following on um, yeah. Twitter, and Instagram. Would... <laughs> but before you go talking any more about uh, about Shea Patterson, the man featured for the Panthers oh, in that video Lynch. was Paxton Lynch. Yes. So Kramer, are Fuck. you really gonna sit there and put your money in Paxton Lynch's hands? No, oh, Fuente's guy. That's well, a that's Fuente the thing. guy. And one other thing you want to remember in this model that I discussed, one Ooh. one USFL team was projected to come in with the worst offense, less than 200 yards passing per game and under 90 rushing yards per game, and it is the Michigan Panthers. Meanwhile, the Gamblers project to have the best offense in the USFL. Smash that underdog right here. Let, Take let, the gamblers and the points. I, I'm of the opinion, like if if uh, Kenji Bahar is playing, I like the gamblers. If Clayton Thorson's playing, I kind of like the Panthers here. Um, I, it's in the rain too, which I think favors Fisher. He's a, he's he's not only a defensive guy; he's also spent many years coaching special teams. So Fade potential someone. block punt, something Fade like someone. that. Um, I, I, I'm going to take the gamblers, thinking Kenji Bahar is going to be the starter. Okay. And you are not featured in the uh, Zapruder. Oh, yeah, no, we uh, have USFL quarterback. We have a gambler's helmet on the table, and I'm faded. This is such a tough spot, but I, I mean, do you guys remember what Kevin Sumlin was? Remember, let's not forget. Yeah, but we, always is, a productive offense. <laughs> always a productive offense, and put points on the board. Isaiah Zuber, uh, you know, coming in as one of the top receivers in the league as well. I mean, again, I'm not. I've seen a decent amount of Clayton Thorson. I was not impressed. But I, 
Is he Ugh. is he better than Shea Patterson and Paxton Lynch combo? When you have two quarterbacks, you have zero quarterbacks. Oh no! And I think that's the case with the Michigan Panthers. I think they're just gonna you know try and run the ball a bunch. And the I, I think they, well gonna, yeah, yeah. I mean, the under in all these games, but especially this one. Um, yeah, and, and to Adam's point, if the model's saying their offense is is going to be decent, I, I'm on board. And oh you're getting goodness. points with them. I just don't this this Michigan Panthers <sighs> team. Come on, uh, it's just, I'm I'm principal like we have a competing principal problem, and I'm just putting fade Sumlin above uh, <laughs> preseason dogs. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> there you go, a little small dog. <laughs> All right. Before we get to the other games, uh, perfect time to s- s- uh, talk about Athletic Greens. Been uh, enjoying my Athletic Greens. Great way to start the day. Get a scoop of that AG one. Get some better gut health. My gut's feeling great. You got seventy five high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens. They send it to you. It's it's very easy to mix it up. You get a nice little uh, shaker bottle. One scoop of that uh, a day, you're good to go. The Athletic Greens has over seven thousand five star reviews. AG One supports uh, better sleep quality and recovery. Kramer, I know you've been enjoying your AG One. Uh, I mean, who doesn't? And now that I'm on, I think I was saying day five this morning. It's gone from not being a the taste not being a problem. I look forward to the taste. To the taste being pretty, you know, pretty tasty. Again, you know, normally people don't do healthy stuff because it's a pain in the ass or it doesn't taste good. And Athletic Greens tastes good, easy to get going. Uh, they're going to give you a free one year supply of immune support, I mean, uh, supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash SGP. Athleticgreens.com slash SGP to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. We're also brought to you by Trade Coffee. Again, I have a sweet little routine going, and it and it coincides great with the sponsors, but I fire up the AG1, get that going, and then right after that, it's time for that delicious trade coffee. Uh man, I mean, trade's so confident, uh, they'll match you right. The first time with the coffee, uh, with your little taste quiz there, they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send you a brand new bag for free. If it's something you don't like, I mean, guaranteed coffee that you like can't beat it. Uh, freshly roasted beans from 60 of the country's best craft roasters, small businesses who pay farmers fair prices to sustainably source the greatest beans from around the world. 5 million bags of fresh coffee. Uh, with more than 750,000 positive reviews right now. Trade is offering new subscribers a total $30 off your first order. Plus free shipping. When you go to drink trade.com slash SGP, more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drink trade.com slash SGP and let trade find you a coffee. You love drink trade.com slash SGP. I mean, you can, you can taste how sustainably sourced it is, Sean. I'll say that. There you Delicious. go. Delicious. There's berries in the, my latest coffee. It's like wine. Really? Yeah. It's uh it's a uh, it's got cherries and blackberry. The hint. smell is just amazing. If you like yeah. a good coffee smell, I really feel like I've been a fucking coffee asshole. <laughs> I, I mean, I do. I feel like I've been drinking like Boone's Farm or something. And now I'm I'm on this shit in a glass bottle. All right. Uh 1 p.m. on the West Coast Sunday. This one you got to tune over to USA programming alert. The Philadelphia Stars, Sean's Stars. I I don't know. Have you reconciled this yet? Uh, I'm so, one. Their logo is the same as the Dallas Cowboys. Which if you're running a, a football team in How? Philadelphia, why would you why would you just rip off the Dallas Cowboys <laughs> logo? And two, that is one of the worst mascots I've seen in my entire life. I'm trying to think of a worse mascot. I'd rather have a dancing tree. That you have some like fucking. You know, I almost uh, think that makes it fun, though, right? Yeah, no. major gritty vibes over there. Oh Come my on. God, Adam, take those, dude, <laughs> cut this out of the podcast. Gritty is a man's man. He is a true mascot. He embodies grittiness. This is just some fucking haphazard dragon <laughs> that looks like it got its face Wait, smushed you, in. You like this, Coleman? No, I think oh, it's fun. You know, so you didn't I, like I, the crack. I think it's it's like not the, fun I, at all. It's I don't serious care bullshit. about mascots. Is this a l- illegitimate child of gritty in the UAE? <laughs> <laughs> dragon like mm. that might be what they were going for. I, it's one of these things, right? Like it's 
If it's, it's really an illegitimate child, you drop that thing in the orphanage and you keep driving. It's not because this thing is an ugly piece of garbage. It's not that hard to ask people <laughs> for feedback. Hey, so what do you think if we make the mascot a uh, like a lumpy dragon? It, it's and it's got like weird buck teeth. Why does it, it's the USFL stars? Why does he have pussy little horns? They're like As not for, even real horns. Either give him badass horns or don't give him. <laughs> he's like nubs. He's got he's got nipples what, on what top are you, what are you of you trying his to head. get some cotton candy from the fucking guy? Who cares, right? <laughs> he looks uh, like he, I mean he looks like a cotton for, candy meta fur ball. <laughs> That's horrible. He's wearing a vest. What do you wear a vest? All right, but look, the Philadelphia the Stars gap? are are uh, legendary. Wow. All right, I they, like the they, team. They've won Colby, two thank you two for USFL championships. Back. Jim Mora, senior, you know Jim Mora Jr., friend of the program. Playoffs. His dad was was uh, you know uh, the champion here in this in this league, and this mm. so this is a, a team that has pedigree. What, what history? Brian Scott is the uh, quarterback for the Stars, local kid. From Occidental out here in Eagle Rock. Of course, you know they won the Spring League uh, in 2020, and he won it with his coach Bart Andrus, who is just uh, just like a, a football junkie. Colby was rattling off uh, Bart's uh, resume, and he's just a guy. Wherever the job is, he shows up. He's ready to coach ball, and they're bringing over a lot of uh, a lot of other guys um, that they had from the Spring League: uh, Devin Gray and Jordan Sewell. Who we'll hear more of when I talk about my DFS lineup, but they're coming in with some chemistry. On the other side, I do like the quarterback, Kyle Sloter. Uh, I mean, if you watch any sort of preseason football, that kid <laughs> balled out 12 preseason games. He went, he threw completion percentage of 74%, 1,222 yards, 11 touchdowns, one INT. I don't know how he didn't get more of a look in the league. I realize it's only preseason, yeah. but he, he seemed to ball out for a consistent time period. I think, yeah, as, you know, especially if you compare him to the preseason lines of the other quarterbacks in the USFL, yeah, exactly. he's clearly the guy. Well, and when you add in the fact you talk familiarity with uh, with Scott and Bart Andrus, which yes, you're 100 percent right there. Uh, uh, Larry Fedora recruited him. Yeah, uh, he's played in his offense before. Yeah. So uh, he was at Southern Miss, then transferred to Northern Colorado. Uh, but yeah, I've been impressed with this kid since he was in college. When he came in, he was just a gamer. I think if there's going to be a, a game that hits the over, it'll be this game. I'm with you, Colby. I, I think this game of any, at least as the talent we know going into it, has the chance, the potential for a shootout. I like the stars getting two and a half. I like them on the money line at plus 130. I'm still taking the under just as a system play. But if there was one to go over, I think it might be this one. Adam, where are you at? What are the what do the projections say? What does your model say? Are you are you riding with the breakers? What are you doing here? I'm riding with the stars because any man who went and coached the Ottawa GGs, <laughs> we had to debate the office. My respect. What is deserves, the Ottawa GGs? It is a <laughs> Canadian college team, and that before the spring league, that was Bart Andrus's last <laughs> coaching experience. I went down a rabbit hole trying to find out who the hell they were. <laughs> and there were some fun, fun rabbit holes I went down with building this model. Uh, this is also a reasonably evenly matched game. The Breakers offense, Larry Fedora is an offensive coach. So I would agree if I'm taking it over, I'm taking this one. But Bart Andrus, football junkie, football lifer, <clears throat> been successful in spring leagues before. He was a coach in the United Football League with the Omaha Nighthawks, the Ottawa GGs, and a man who's coached in that the Feather at Feather River College, <laughs> which contrary to Colby's belief is a JUCO, not an actual D college. It is a JUCO. This man has done it all. He what? can win and he can win with I mean, I think he could put Colby and I out there as the quarterback <laughs> running back combo and we he'd win games. I uh, won a World Bowl in 2005 in the World Football League. I mean, this guy He's done it all. <laughs> What's not to love about this guy? Uh, the st uh, everything's great about the stars except their logo and their mascot. Kramer, what would do you love a World Bowl? What do you, you got? The Breakers. What do you? You guys all picked against the best quarterback in the league. 
I don't know. I mean, again, I'm sorry. I wasn't aware we were talking about the bandits game. <laughs> oh. All right. I disagree. I I'll give me a you slaughter like sl- over a, a 10 slaughter Sundays. Now it is going to be tough for us to fade slaughter, slaughter I, Sundays. I, I feel but, like I, wait, so I, Colby, you, you're wearing the breakers uh, shirt. And you hey, I'm a breaker them. fan, but I think that the lock here is to take uh is to Benedict take breaker f- over take here. Yeah. That stars. sounds like a fair weather fan to me. You know, that sounds like someone who enjoys watching football in a dome. If you enjoy <laughs> Oh, oh man! Wants, wants just the Adam only knew what that. Means. Yeah, complains about the running game. Says if Adam too only much knew how strong of an insult that was, that <laughs> he just said to Colby. All right, I know I told you I would take all dogs, and I've taken two favorites in a row. Chalk. One more to go. That's, that's me, Ashy Larry. Uh, this one's on FS1, 5 p.m. on the West Coast Sunday. Easter, so what a what a card for Easter! How how about the USFL? How gracious to bring us football Another on Easter. third day, he rose again to watch the Bandits play the Ballers. <laughs> to watch spring football, the Tampa Bay Bandits, four twenty five to win it all, taking on the Pittsburgh Maulers, six to one to win it all. Pretty solid matchup here. Bandits minus four, minus one ninety five on the money line. Maulers plus one sixty five. Forty one and a half is the total. Uh, this is another uh, clear under, right? Yeah, I mean, keep 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 pounding the unders. I mean, Pittsburgh Maulers. They have Kirby Wilson as their head coach, who has no head coaching mm. or OC experience. You have Kyle Laletta, uh, You know, let me tell you, one, something. Of, one of Kramer's favorite he Giants sucks. quarterbacks. Yeah, <laughs> he's really bad. And on the other <laughs> end, you got Jordan Tamu, uh, XFL star with the Battle Hawks. He looked really good. He's an interesting play in DFS and fantasy. He has some rushing upside. The Bandits, as far as mojo, they have Vince Papali's son. <laughs> they actually have Todd Haley, not Chan Gailey, uh, as their head coach. So I think they got a lot going for him. The only thing that scares me away is 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 this Bandits lane four a, a chalky play? It feels like most people are going to come in yeah. and, and take the bandits in a weird way. They have the most name recognition Maulers. I expect to be kind of what their name uh, says and, and, you know, just kind of run it, run it down the throat of the defense. A lot of Don't just you, but- ugly, uh, just not, not high flying offense, but that might keep them in the game. So surprised uh, he's uh, anti Kyle Laletta because you know uh, he was arrested in New Jersey after being pulled <laughs> over in his Jaguar and uh, he, was, look, he was eluding police, a third degree crime, obstructing uh, administration of law, and resisting arrest. Well, there's no place uh, for that. This is a true That's Jersey TV legend, in my opinion, <laughs> John. Real Sorry, I just accidentally of- hit real men of DJ. <laughs> Kyle Laletta. Uh, I get your play though. I get your play because. Uh, I, uh, look, I've taken all dogs, so I, I think I'm going to go Tampa Bay Bandits here. But I, I, I am worried I'm a that it's a bit chalky. It's chalky, and I don't, I don't like laying four points in a new football league. That but, seems. But Jordan Tom has been a star, as, as Adam just alluded to, in the, in the XFL. He's played in the NFL. This guy's com- is a baller. I, I just think they're just a much better roster. Yeah, uh, that's where I'm at, Adam. How say you? Uh, I. Following the crowd here, going with the bandits. I can't bet against Jordan Tawamu. I think he's hands down the best quarterback in this league. You know, he may not be the passer that some of the other guys are, but he's done it on multiple levels. He's had that NFL team experience, and I'm still shocked he's not on an NFL roster. And I love the gamblers for fantasy because Todd Haley, if you're not the RB1 or the wide receiver one, you ain't shit to Todd Haley. Yeah, very, very obvious. And he is a master of the the quick passing game. Like he developed an offense with Big Ben where it, hey, this guy, you know, he's he's not great if you're gonna like leave him in the pocket, but he can get get rid of the ball quick and it's a massive advantage to have any continuity. And the fact that there's some continuity I mean, yeah, I would go I, again, I said, take all the dogs, unless you have a compelling reason. I ha- I've given you three compelling <laughs> reasons to take favorites. I mean, again, don't you think good quarterbacks will make all the difference? Like, well, and we saw the rain. P- we saw it with PJ Walker though. It, it doesn't matter with Jordan Talamu though. Cause he's going to make the plays with his legs too. Yeah. yeah. And I just think like in terms of like what an offense can look like, there's a couple guys that that we talked about that probably can allow for a little bit more mature of an offense. Like Pittsburgh is going to run the ball. Like it shouldn't be that hard to figure out what Load they're going the to do. 
And so I, I guess that's more my my angle. Like I I think you know Tampa Bay is gonna force Kyle Aletta to beat him, and I don't think he's going to be able to. No, that guy's really bad. I, and I mean, Kyle Aletta in the rain. Yeah, Jordan Tamu. Is a guy who at least has it recent football. It might be Josh experience. Love. It might be Josh Love. Their over other Jordan. Over Jordan Tama. No, no, no. Oh, uh, over oh, Loletta. Yeah. yeah. Over Loletta. But, but I mean, Todd Haley. Get, yeah, shout but, out to Scott Bowser. You guys know he filed a one point five million dollar lawsuit against McDonald's because his wife found a rat, a dead rat, in her salad. An entire dead rat. <laughs> entire dead rat in her salad. He also got in a minor scuffle and was arrested at a tequila bar. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like this Tampa Bay Bandits. What team. kind of research is Colby doing for these games? Colby, the way Colby is plugged into the internet is very unique. Very unique. Colby, aren't we fading Kirby Wilson just because this is the first game he's, he's ever been ever a head, head coach, coach right? at any level? That's true, and, and that could be a good thing. But I, you know, I'm a run first guy, and he is mm, attitude oh established the places, run. You know. Um, but yeah, I'm on the bandits. I just think the roster's too good for 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 the Maulers. Yep. All right. So uh, what do we do here? Do we want to do we want to talk futures a little bit? I mean, we should. I, I'm gonna. We should. I'm gonna keep it homery. I'll just give me the stars at six to one. Love it. I don't think you can take anything less than six to one, right? Because I mean, it's probably way closer to even. Circle than, to you me. know Then like I mean. Maybe the breakers at five to one, but uh, honestly, you could probably just uh, circle the breakers <clears throat> as as a team. You can, yeah. I, I I think you play the breakers, and for me, I would. You know, I don't know what the other team is. You, Generals. You, you got to pick those three. Right. I mean, I would gamblers uh, yeah. even. Yeah. So Colby's got four of the uh, teams <laughs> to win. Well, the, I, I, I'm USFL. just saying, I, I don't I don't agree with like. Okay, I, I wouldn't take the Maulers. I, I think the Panthers can't uh, won't do it, but I, I I like the stars. I think that's the best play. All right, let's yeah. do it. Stars six to one. Kramer, you're on the breakers. Give me the breakers and give me the generals, baby. Okay, you're playing two USFL futures. So we get two. We conference. get a second one. Okay. <laughs> No, stop it, uh, Adam. What about you? And explain the playoff format. How many teams make the playoffs? All eight. Four teams. Uh, semifinals uh, June 25th, and then championship game, July 3rd, all played in Canton, Ohio. Um, they are technically two divisions, the North and the South. So top two, two teams, from each division, top two from each division, make mm. it. Um, so you've got the generals, the Panthers, Philly and Pittsburgh in one division. So really also you got to be looking at this as Pittsburgh and Michigan are not going to hang with Philly and the generals. So you're picking a team from between there for the North and the South feels a bit more wide open with the teams. Um, there's not a clear delineation between the stallions, the gamblers, <laughs> the breakers and the bandits. I could make an argument for any four of them coming out of the South. Whereas in the North, it's going to be the generals or the stars in my opinion. Yeah. It's gotta be the brand breakers have the best quarterback. It's going to matter. I mean, but the thing is, is like, I could see Kenji Bahar being a breakout star in this, yes. you know, yes. Um, you know, the 38 man roster matters because D as good as a defense is, they're not going to be able to hang with an offense. They're going to get tired running up and down the field. They're going to get tired chasing receivers all over the field. And I think that as we start to go through this, um, you're going to start to see more attrition. You know, you're going to see players drop and there's only seven guys on a practice squad and offenses. I think overs are going to come into play pretty quickly by like week three of the season would be my guess. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how, how quickly these teams gel. All right, let's do a lock and a dog oh, easy. and then we'll, uh, and then we'll get to our DFS lineups. Kramer lay it on us. What do you got? I'm going to lock up the breakers disrespectful number at minus two and a half. Okay. And give me my dog, the generals. Do we have some good military music? I'll, oh, next, okay. next show I'll have to get some generals. <laughs> I'm sure Colby can find something. For me. I got you. <laughs> generals looking at a plus one forty five on the money line for my lock. Give me, you gotta go stars plus two and a half fading. You know, you know, Kramer's record in spring football. It speaks for itself. <laughs> and then this is professional. That joke was just for Colby. Yeah. This is professional, not sub college <laughs> minor football. And then I'm going the gamblers on the money line uh, for yeah, my touch dog. Touch the helmet, dude. I, I don't know if I can quite reach it. <laughs> Colby, what do you got? Let's lock up. Uh, <laughs> I mean, let's go. Let's go for the dog, actually. Generals. That's the one that stands yeah, out to me. Let's go. Um, and uh, for the uh, for the lock, wrong team favorite there, right? 
let's go. Yeah, wrong team favorite, one hundred percent. The lock. Let's go with uh, let's go with the stars. All right, plus two and a half money line that thing too. Look Copying my lock and dogs and Smart hit the man. over and hit the over on that. Let's no, let's no overs. All on yeah. this, Adam. What do you got? Uh, I got to take the generals on the uh, dog there. Oh, uh, okay. Not even a question. Uh, the stallions, you know, Skip Holtz is fun, but he's not the coach that uh, Mike Riley is. Mike Riley has a team that he's coached before. Absolutely love the generals money line there for the dog. And for the lock, uh, let's lock in the bandits minus four. You know, that's not even going to be a game. That's going to be Jordan Tawamu. Could be a bloodbath. You know, yeah, that's going to be if that that is a game that I'd say is my second most likely to hit the over because that's a game where the bandits score 30 points. Ooh. Well, and we saw that with the, team total over I with like. the AAF and the XFL, like the good quarterbacks really kind of yeah. popped. And then there was just you know, some guys in the bottom that just were really bottomed out. Same as the real NFL. Like <laughs> most of the quarterbacks suck, and there's a couple. Yeah, good there's ones. like ten good quarterbacks in America. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the AAF Week One, and oh, this the, back score. in 2019, we had we had a 15-6 score. Okay. Yeah. We had a 40 to six though. Oh. Steve Spurrier dropped a, oh, dropped a yeah. 40 we, we spot. We knew that was coming. Uh, Birmingham 26, nothing against Memphis. Under. Mike Singletary was the coach of Memphis. Oh, and yeah, yes. then Arizona uh, won 38, 22 on Salt Lake Ooh. on Salt Lake city. So that, that the over would have hit, but I would imagine. Let's, let's go to the XFL week one. We had the defenders in Seattle, 31, 19. So 50 points there. Uh, roughnecks and wildcats, 37, 17, 54. <laughs> And then we came in with some unders 26 points total from Tampa Bay and the guardians. And then a disappointing 24 point spot from St. Louis and Dallas. So, you know, over uh, are definitely in play if the team is right. And again, it matters that there's only that they're short rosters. It matters that defenses are going to be gassed quicker and the offenses are going to have an advantage later in the games. I'm predicting three and one on the mm. unders. Hey, while you're uh, while you're watching some uh, XF or sorry USFL oh, wow. this weekend, why don't you fire up the old Stable Duel app? Get the TVG going on the second screen. Get some horse racing DFS action. You can win as much as I mean they're giving away forty thousand dollars in one race. So much fun. We got a bunch of horse racing podcasts coming out. More horse racing picks. DFS uh, is of of course you got to get over to Stable Duel. Very easy to put your stable together. They have uh, free games get you started uh, weekly at all uh, all different tracks all over the United States. It is it's just a fun sweat. It's a nice little you can make a day of it. Just hang out, fire up the uh, Stable Duel app, get the to get the get the horse racing going. It's uh, again watching your horses race is just such a rush. And it's fun building your own stable. Download now over at stableduel.com. See how many winners you can pick in your stable. And I'll see you in the winner's circle. Play, race, win. And of course, also right to buy Prop Swap, where America goes to buy and sell real sports bets. Oh, man. PropSwap.com, promo code SGP. Get that bonus. Start buying and selling tickets. Oh man. Again, what's so fun is now NBA playoffs are happening. NHL playoffs are happening. You can sell your tickets. Maybe you're worried about uh, one of your futures, or maybe you want to buy someone else's future Propswap.com promo code SGP instant deposit match up to $500. And they got a loyalty rewards program. Turns your ticket sales into extra bonus cash. Are you kidding me? Propswap.com for a dollar to a dollar to dollar deposit match. Promo code SGP Kramer. Let's do it. DFS. Who do you got? Oh, I, I lead off here. I like this. Uh, best quarterback in the league for your New, or- or New Orleans Breakers. The Sloter. S- the Sloter, Sloter Sundays. Sloter House. They call him the Sloter the, House. The Sloter House. <laughs> the, I was gonna say the Slaughter Pop. <laughs> <laughs> the Slaughter Pop. Ten thousand. Uh, one of what? Three three guys popping over the five figure mark. You know, I had to squeeze some guys in, uh, save a couple bucks elsewhere. But you know, I, this is where I was starting my lineup. After I finished the prep, I said, you know what? I could, I, I think uh, Tamu is going to be chalky, and I, you know, I want to have a little leverage on the field here. We're still playing DFS, Sean. Yep. Still a little strategy involved. So give me the slaughter pop. Adam, who's your quarterback? <laughs> Going with the only quarterback anyone should start this weekend, Jordan Tau Almu. See. see? 
only one who has stackable options that I'm excited Ooh. about. And right. I would guarantee is going to start this weekend. Well, I'm going Brian Scott, of course, of the <laughs> Philadelphia stars, only 9,200 again, dominated in the spring league, ton of continuity with coaches and with some of his receivers. And I mean, again, he's bringing over two receivers. He threw to in the spring league. I love that kind of continuity. Uh, Colby, what do you got for your quarterback? I had some extra money left over Sean after I went through. Cause uh, I was agreeing with you, but then I thought, no, Slaughter Sundays yeah. is going to be yeah. a Slaughter's thing. Fun. He's in a system. He knows. Yeah. Give me Kyle Slaughter. And that, what'd you say he was? What's his nickname again? The Slaughter Pop. Slaughter Pop. Slaughter Pop. <laughs> All right. Kramer, running back. Uh, Weber for the Generals. Uh, I think, uh, you know, Riley, if you look at his coaching history, likes to run the ball a little bit. I think this team's going to have to run the ball a little bit with the quarterback situation. I think it's going to be wet. I think they realized they could play a low scoring game and get the win. Uh, maybe just a little bit more physicality, 7,500 clear uh, workhorse. I, th- I, I mean, it's, I, who knows? It's a complete dart throw, but based on the, the shit that I read, seems like he's a safe bet to get a lot of volume 7,500 Adam, what are you doing at running back going with BJ Emmons on the Tampa Bay bandits? Because I think he's going to be the guy who leads that backfield and again, Todd Haley is the only coach who's going to give 90% of the work to one of his backs. So I'm betting big on BJ Evans being that guy. I almost feel like I just need to copy Adam's lineup with his <laughs> with his knowledge of this league. He does, just, he does really sell case. hard sell. I, I shared the projections. Uh, spreadsheet. Check, check your email, Ryan. If you're you guys. Yeah, yeah, you've got, <laughs> you've got the entire productivity there, oh. and you're going to be terrified by how much actual research I did on this. <laughs> oh, daddy. It was an ungodly oh, amount of time I spent on it. Well, I'm it ha- is, happy to participate. All right. So I'm going, and uh, I have not, I have, not, you have a DFS pricing calculator in here as well. Oh my I God. How this. is this not on? I mean, all right, the DFS gotta, pricing cap, the DFS pricing calculator, we hope to be rolling out on alt fantasy this, later this year. So this will be the pricing model that we hopefully use for, Oh God. Uh, to Damn. create the DFS games on, uh, on all later this year. Oh yes. All right. So we know in these, uh, Show comes screeching to a halt as everyone looks at spreadsheet. <laughs> All right, who are you taking, Sean? Who am I taking? Great you want question. Colby to go first? No, I'm going uh, Jordan Ellis. He's uh, forty eight hundred dollars. He's a pass catching running back for the Breakers. And again, I'm kind of going to go heavy on this uh, Philly New Orleans game, and it's the highest total on the board. And from what I could tell, Ellis is one of the more pass catching. You know more inclined running back to catch some passes out of the backfield. And he's only 4,800. I'm trying not to spend on running back because you only need one running back. The rest are uh receiver tight end or flex. So uh, I'm going to keep it heavy on the pass catchers. Colby, what's your, uh, what's your running back? Uh, CJ Marable. Uh, and, and my logic is this. I've watched a shit ton of skip Holtz in my life. It, this game's in the rain. What does he do? He doesn't throw the ball. He always runs the ball. Uh, 5,400. Give me CJ Marable. All right. I looked at him. Uh, it uh, it does seem like another guy that could is, could see some volume. All right, are we wide receiver one? Stack. I assume we're playing DFS still. Oh Stack. yeah. Stack. Point. Uh, all right. So tell me if I'm wrong here. Is is Point Dexter expected to play a uh, voluminous role pro- projecting out of the slot? That that's been a pretty standard idea that Point Dexter okay. is going to be heavily involved there. Um, you know, if you're looking at. <laughs> Poindexter is just such a nerd name. I it also really have is, Poindexter. But if you're looking at the Breakers wide receiver one, so most targeted receiver, they project out in the grand scheme of things to be the second best receiver in the league behind whoever the Bandits wide receiver one is. All right. So I'm with you. I also have Poindexter. Who's your uh, receiver one? I mean, Poindexter. I have Poindexter in my lineup as well. Um, All right. You know, that's just yeah, ninety one hundred. And the other thing is, is with some of these super low pro- price points for some guys, you can really stack up on some of the top end talent. Oh, so I, d- I did something right there, Sean. Look at me. <laughs> Colby, what do you got? Who's your, uh, who's your first uh, receiver? I'm I'm nerding it out too with Poindexter <laughs> 9,100. Right. Oh, chalk, yeah, chalk, chalk. Let's go. Kramer, uh, we, second need, receiver? we need to come up with a good nickname for the slaughter pop and Poindexter uh, wide receiver too. So uh, I think Adam mentioned stacking guys. 
for the bandits. And I, I identify that as a passing offense. I wanted to have a piece of, so I went over there and I know based on the things I read, Rashard Davis again, is he going to run a slot role for this team? Richard, Richard Davis has been pretty much the guy everyone's been keying in on since okay. Eli Rogers went out. Um, the bandits wide receiver one, whoever there is most involved, you know, that's been a guy like Antonio Brown, um, Juju Smith Schuster. Uh, that's definitely someone that you want to have on your roster and you want to target. Um, so yeah, I I'm down with that. I, He's I, 8, I, like that idea. I also, I also Fuck have go. It. I'm killing this shit. Are you kidding or, me? Or you could stack a much cheaper option and go with Daquan Hampton at 2,800. What big, mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. tight end for the band. It's going to come in here. Just going to sneak in there, you know, get some red zone looks snipe a target here at 2,800 left me lots of salary cap room to come back later and do some fun stuff. Like, yeah, I'm not playing a tight end unless unless I really so need you, to. But so. To be clear, so your fourth guy is not Davis. You're playing Hampton. Correct. I'm oh, playing. Okay, uh, I like Ham that. All right. I'm playing uh, Hampton is my fourth player. So fourth, yeah. res second receiver, tight end, or flex, whatever you want to call it. Colby, but he's in there to complete my Tampa stack. I like. What that. do you got? That's uh, 7200. I went with uh, Jordan Sewell. Uh, he, he 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 was with uh, Bart Andrus. Um, Brian Scott. Yeah, they they already have connections. So I also one of my uh, flex guys that is part of my stacks is is Sewell as well. Well, I mean we 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 hit on this. We want we wanted the over in this game. It's the one yeah. over we thought that could cash, uh, and and I think there's gonna be a ton of offense in it. So 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 the 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 top the top Philly receiver you think will be Sewell. No, because yes. I well I I, I do I do a yeah. double stack. I I'm stacking both Philly receivers. Okay, Devin Gray Ooh. and uh, Jordan Sewell. I think those are going to be the two guys. Adam, what does the model say? Which which is the top guy? Uh, I mean, they're both going to be options, definitely. But uh, actually, uh, Brennan Eagles is someone who more people have been targeting as the top option. Um, and he's only 4,400. Wait, too. he plays for Philly. His name's Eagle, Sean. He didn't oh, cover yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that wasn't your guy there, Sean. That just feels like something you I should had, be. I had extra money, you know, Devin Gray, 7,700 Sewell's 72. There's your Tariq uh, Cohen. The yeah. other guy that is stupidly <laughs> low price that people have been in on is bug Howard. He's a converted wide receiver tight end. Now for the Philly stars, you could put him in your lineup for 2,600. Wow. And that is just obscenely low for a guy who has NFL experience as well as was productive in the AAF for the Atlanta legends. I didn't hear a no. So I'm going to just plow ahead with uh, my, I, the well, model doesn't take into account guys right now. It's just okay. ambivalent bandits so, wide receiver one. All right, so, so make your bets based on your assessments there. So I'm, I am, uh, I'm going to stick with my first flex guy, a guy that one of the two guys that Sean stacked, I'm taking Devin gray, 7,700. I too had plenty of money. So uh, getting under the cap here wasn't a problem. I'm going to be playing like 12 lineups. So right, I will so have some <laughs> Eagles lineup. Adam, who's your first flex? First flex uh, going with Jeff Badet mm. out of on the Michigan Panthers. Speedy wide receiver. I'm not counting on Shea Patterson or Paxton Lynch to push the ball down the field, but I am counting on their ability to just kind of loft it over the middle there on a five yard crossing route to Jeff Badet and let him turn on the Jets and take it to the house. Ooh. He was with the Dallas. Uh, what was the Dallas Re uh, Renegade? Yeah, yeah, Renegade. I'm a and he also spent Mavericks. some time with the yeah. Washington Football Team this past year. Also, a guy who probably going to be in on the kick return game. Ooh, so. yeah, special teams action. I, I've given out most of my lineup except defense. Colby, what do you got? Um, I got uh, Dalen Dawkins as my. Uh, so I, I think running backs are the play in in in, in week one here, especially with the rain, but also just the uncertainty with the wide receiver position. It's not a bad um, angle. So I, I went with Dalen Dawkins. I know you know Sumlin doesn't isn't a run first coach, no. but he uh, <laughs> does throw the ball out of the backfield to the running back. So I'm going to take a shot on Dalen Dawkins. Okay. I was a baller at Colorado state. I saw a lot of them as he scorched my Buffaloes. Uh, and wait, am I, do, am I giving away two right now? Or no, one? no, no. Okay. You're, you're good. 
So then Sean, Sean's already given out his entire lineup somehow. Minus defense. I, I'm gonna give well, out because you mentioned the other guys and it felt like good time to I, pop in. I'm gonna give out my second flex and I'm gonna ask Adam a question because I uh, Mumphrey, who I think has some history with Jordan Tamu from, from He does. Okay. They played together in St. Louis in the uh I fucking in the, in the XFL. Uh, Mumphrey, guy out of Michigan State, you know, can make plays, you know. Do you like Mumphrey more than Hampton? I want to play two receivers on that. I like Hampton better than I like Mumphrey right now, but that's just also a price thing. I don't think you could go wrong with 200 because he's only 3000 Mumphrey's only 3000. I might go Mumphrey. Um, All right. Mumphrey especially started to come on um, late in uh, (laughs) late in that Mumphrey XFL season last year. Fuck yeah. And the, the, the chemistry, like Sean was and calling just out. Great was cool. team yeah. too. Mumphrey and Sons. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, low itself. bar right there. Yeah. Adam, when are we when is the post of <laughs> funny XFL fantasy names Let's go. be uh, USFL. XFL is yeah. right. come next on, year. You, you <laughs> All right, Sean, let's go. Adam, who's your final <laughs> flex? Uh last guy, like Colby, need a running back in here. I went with Darnell Hollins out of Philly. Um eighty one hundred. Running back there, probably going to be the lead guy for Philly. Um, some guys like Mike Weber in New Jersey and the Generals are priced up. I would avoid the New Jersey backfield oh. because Mike Riley has consistently used three backs throughout his spring football coaching career. Oh, no. So you're just hoping you pick the right guy who falls into the end zone. Shit. So if you think you have an inside track on that, cool. But other than that, I'd stay away from the Generals backfield. I have an inside track. I'm sticking to my guns. All right, Colby. Uh, I, I went with the guy I drafted my USFL fantasy draft oh. over at Odd Fantasy. Uh, I went with Larry Rose the third. Look, New Orleans Breakers. I'm telling you, I just want action in this game. And Larry Rose the third. I remember him at New Mexico State. This guy is a baller. He played for the Titans and the Rams. He was also in the AAF with the Arizona Hot Shots, and then in the XFL with the uh, the LA Wildcats. But I think Larry Fedora's offense just mm. once again. Uh, no, I'm, you're making I'm, me. I'm pivoting off of Weber. I like this play. Give me. Give me another breaker. Well, I, I'm not counting on him to have 100 yards rushing. Maybe 100 receiving though. I like get, it. get him out of the backfield. You know, get him Fuck out of the it. backfield. It's Larry Fedora's offense. So, <laughs> boom. Let's give me go. Larry Rose. Adam. Adam convinced me. I I was making a fool. I was. It was a foolish play to play a, a running back in the general's backfield. I did so great. I just made one mistake. Now I fixed it. Let's go. All Sean? right. Are we on the defense? I'm now on my defense. Who's your defense, Ryan? Panthers. I told you the one unit I I suspect will be ready is Jeff Fisher's defense. I think they'll do fine, and I think mostly because they're going against Kevin Sumlin. Well, I mean, <laughs> there will be mistakes to be made. I had plenty of money; it didn't matter. So, uh, yeah, I took the the top defense. You would think Sean would back you here because this is Buddy Ryan pedigree here. I got blasted on the on the fantasy draft last night for drafting a defense really early. <laughs> I went with this. I, I, I'm sorry. It I'm going was like out of the turn. third round, guys. He, it was like <laughs> his third round pick, and then he launched into a triple option tirade, and you know, yes, he, the rest is history. Paul Johnson, yeah, the rest is history. Washington Federals next year, Paul Johnson. But no, uh, honestly, there's one defensive head coach hired in the USFL. This is a guy who always has aggressive defenses. You can go back to the Titans days with Cortland Finnegan. Yep. Uh, the, the, and he played. He was a coach on the '85 Bears. Yeah. Why would you not roster this defense at 4,700? Uh, great, great pick, Cole. So I'm not going to waste my money on defense. I'm wow. going to waste. I'm going to spend my wow. money on the Birmingham Stallions. Birmingham, Alabama will be in full throat, just yelling, <laughs> screaming for their stallions. Full throat. Huh? Yeah, full th- that's when you're really going crazy, going loud, Ryan. I don't know where your brain's at, but uh, the Stallions. I, I just like going up against this Generals quarterback situation, which is in flux. Give me the Stallions, thirty eight hundred bucks. Adam, close it out. Who's your defense? Uh, I went with the team that's playing the worst offense in the USFL. I like the it. team that is playing against Jeff Fisher's oh, no. Michigan Panthers. Give me the Houston Gamblers because if I know one thing about Shea Patterson mm. and Paxton Lynch, they are walking turnovers. <laughs> lawn yeah. chair. Not even turnover. Yeah, lawn chair. Total lawn chair quarterbacks. <laughs> both. You of know them. what? You're but right. They they have a slight upgrade. They're like lawn chairs on wheels because they can move <laughs> a little bit. But lawn chairs. 
You mm-hmm. talked me into it. I'm taking the gamblers as well. It's a good angle. They should be the cheapest. Free some money to spend it on a, to bring in better guys <laughs> elsewhere. I mean, that's a we might want to put a mortgage payment on the under in that game. <laughs> all right. Again, all unders. They're gonna go three and one. That's my lead pipe. Okay. Lock. All right. Make sure you get your uh, season long USFL league going over at altfantasysports.com. Enter your league using our official settings, and whatever league has the most combined points scored in it will win a thousand dollars courtesy of SGP. And Adam, uh, what's going on on the website? What can people look forward to? What can't you look forward to? Oh, We've got question. your fantasy primer this week for the USFL. We've got mock drafts going up for the NFL. Jeremy Popolar's dropped his. We've got major league baseball, fantasy baseball, player props. What else do you need? We're going to get you started with all your dynasty content as we get towards the NFL draft. I mean, just you name it, we got it. Like, why do you go anywhere else for your sports content, y'all? Why? Well, just I don't mean, even bother. Nothing like listening to a promo from Adam. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, it cuts a hell of a promo. That's beautiful. Make sure you check out Colby Dant and the USFL Gambling Podcast crew. Colby, what's happening on uh USFL gambling show? No, Picking the games. Picks, DFS, uh, fantasy football talk. You got it all with USFL. We're gonna cover every single game that's ever in the league. And uh maybe some oh interviews. Yeah, try to we're trying to get in some interviews again and uh and also the college football experience. College football experience, uh preseason we're not here to talk content about coming football. up. Ne- next week do we get Colby's list of dome stadiums he most wants to see the <laughs> USFL in in twenty twenty three. Oh, that'd be so great. <laughs> well, he's gonna do Top one. You see, you see yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I could probably come up with one. I think there should be one in every league just so they can have the identity of a 12% team. of the <laughs> league. Yeah. I, I feel like, I feel like Colby would be okay if they put one in like the Kibby dome in <laughs> I, Idaho. I feel like that's yeah. the only acceptable the Fargo dome, dome. No, in even Colby's it, look, mind. Even if the breakers did it, cause they're kind of a old creamsicle buck, Buccaneers look it would fit. So then I would, I would just not be a fan of them, but I would enjoy the identity because they would be the pussy team of the All league. Right. You got to have that for every league. You need a cupcake yeah. and we're out. All right. That'll do it for the show. Make sure you subscribe to our youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. Give us a follow on Twitter at gambling podcast. Thank you for participating in the sports gambling podcast for the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green. He is Ryan. Uh, Sean, you can of course follow me at Kramer centric Kramer. Let it ride.